And here with me now is my old friend and the former Congresswoman Elizabeth Holtzman. She was a member of the Judiciary Committee that voted on impeaching Richard Nixon. She's also the author of several books, including The Case for Impeaching Trump. Uh, good to see you in person. It's been a long time. It's been a long time, we, but it's we, great to see you, too. Thank you. Except that every time I'm talking to you, bad things are happening. Yes. Um, and, and I have to say, Liz, the, the bad things that are happening now are, are very, very worrisome. There are these series of investigations into Donald Trump that may lead to indictments, but the language coming out of Donald Trump and the support that Charlie just mentioned that he is getting from congressional Republicans, that didn't happen in Watergate. That was not, in fact, that's why Richard Nixon ceased to be the president of the United States, because congressional Republicans said what he did was a step too far. That piece of history seems to be erased. Right. Just... I think it's really important to step back and remember a couple of things. Number one, Richard Nixon was named an unindicted co-conspirator by the federal grand jury. So the idea that presidents are beyond the reach of the law is nonsense. In right. fact, that grand jury wanted to indict uh, Richard Nixon. They were prevented from doing so because the pr special prosecutor said, you don't have the authority. But the fact is, they named him an unindicted co-conspirator. That was a horrible moment in American history for us to realize the shame of having a president named as an unindicted co-conspirator. That's with the whole Watergate cover-up. Let's think about where we are now. The framers of the Constitution were so worried about power and the misuse of power that they broke up not only checks and balances in, in the federal government, but between the states and the federal government to preserve liberty. And what do we have now? The Republicans who always talk about states' rights, right. and states' power, they want to come in and subvert what the framers of the Constitution created, which was basically a pretty solid wall between state power and yep. federal power. Yes, it can go up to the Supreme Court. Yes, the federal government can influence things by providing money and so forth. But the fact of the matter is that something is really bedrock, and yep. that is the power to preserve law and order, and that's what's being attacked here by the Republicans in Congress for no reason other than to protect a former president of the United States who may well have committed crimes. So it's outrageous. Donald Trump is calling for the removal of four prosecutors. One of them is, is federally appointed Jack Smith. The other three are, are state people. Uh, Alvin Bragg is the New York uh, district attorney. Uh, Letitia James is the New York uh, attorney general. Fannie Willis is, is an attorney, a, a district attorney in, in, in Georgia. This point that Charlie makes is that you're making here because you were a district attorney in and Brooklyn. And in Congress. Yeah. And, and we right. never even thought about going in and trying to right. destroy or obstruct state prosecutions. That's what's happening now. This yep. is really an effort to obstruct a state prosecution or a state investigation. Wait, but speaking of an effort to obstruct, that uh, image that Donald Trump posted uh, of him with a baseball bat and Alvin Bragg came out, came down quite fast, uh, but it was posted. Um, and Donald Trump's lawyer was talking to uh, Reverend Al about this. As a former prosecutor, I want to get your take, and a former district attorney, I want to get your take on this. Oh, okay, we don't have it. Um, we'll pull it up in a second. But every prosecutor I have spoken to since that happened said uh, it came down because for once maybe Donald Trump listened to a, a real lawyer who said, you can't do this. Like guys, like guys like me think that people threaten their prosecutors all the time. Let's, we've got it now. Let's play it. There was a picture with a bat mm -hmm. that someone had put together right, that someone. he reposted. Did okay. he not? So, how will the witness answer the question? The witness is about to answer the question. Did he repost? It? However ill advised that post was, reposting that, he reposted Does the article. Does that mean that you he stipulate it. he did repost it? Well, apparently he reposted, but I also know he took it down when he realized what was in that photo. Oh, he was I reposting see. an article, but he did take so it down. So, I stabbed you in the back, but I took the knife out. Before the knife did any damage. He, just in case people didn't hear that, I took the, he said before the knife did any damage. I mean, this is, this is a serious matter. Right. Not just the picture. But think of the picture that his words, Trump's words create, death and destruction. Right. That's what he's predicting for prosecutors and for this country and for his opponents. That's the, that's the horror. I was a prosecutor for eight years. We had 900 murders in Brooklyn every year, 900. 
Nobody ever dared, nobody ever dared to send me any threat. Wow. And I don't know of any other prosecutor. I, that's that what I've heard. I've, I've heard. All the prosecutors I've talked to in the last few days and have I'll said this doesn't happen. And I'll tell you something. Trump needs to be held accountable for this. And Americans need to understand what's he, what he's saying. If we take the law of violence instead of law and order, then we're in anarchy, then we're in chaos, then we've destroyed our country. We solve problems not with a bat and not with violence. We solve them in our courts. We solve them in a peaceable way. If we don't, we've, our country's destroyed. What kind of example does he set for, um, for our children, for America, to use violence against the people you disagree with or the people who disagree with you. So the, the, the people who disagree with you, Donald Trump lumps them in quite well. They are the government. They are these four prosecutors. Uh, they are opponents. They are whistleblowers. They are even witnesses, right? The stuff he's been talking about with Michael Cohen over the last couple of weeks. The problem with Donald Trump is you can get rid of every one of these people and there'll be dozens to replace them. He can't stop the rule of law. He can't stop the wave of justice. He can't. He can try, but he can't. You get rid of Jack Smith, there are 10 other Jack Smiths to take his place. Right. You get rid of Alvin Bragg, there are 10 others. So the, 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 the implication, the threat, because he will say, I didn't tell anybody that to, to engage in but death we, and destruction. Yeah. I just said that if you indict me, death and destruction will result. And this is how he doesn't get indicted. This is how he slips through the legal process, because he doesn't really say, he just implies. He tries, yeah. but we know him now. We have an example in January 6th. He said it will be wild. He didn't say you should be wild. He said, yes, let's fight like hell to get this, you know, to bring America back. He didn't say you have to beat up five and kill five police officers and, and injure 140 of them. But we know that MO now. He's not going to fool any jury. And, and I think he should be held accountable, not just for all of the other things he's done, but for this effort to intimidate and to threaten prosecutors, because this gets at what's fundamental. Because of every one of the people I was prosecuting, whether it was for shoplifting or burglary or murder, came after me, had their families come after me, not only me, but the police, the judges. Where would we be as a yeah. society? We'd be in total anarchy. That's not America. If you want to make America great, we have to have the rule of law. Liz, it's important to have your voice here. You know a lot about these things, having been a district attorney, having been a member of Congress, and having worked through Watergate. It's great to see you again.